For me, I think switching out your laundry routine for a more eco-friendly one is one of the easiest things that you can do to start living more zero waste. A lot of these swaps in the laundry area are actually not that different than the traditional stuff that we'll find on the shelves of a grocery store. So today I'm not going to dive into my personal laundry routine. I'm just going to get through all of the potential zero waste swaps that you could implement into your laundry routine. You can pick and choose what works for you. You can leave the rest and then we'll go from there. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live zero waste. And as I said, making your laundry routine more eco-friendly is one of the easiest things I think you can do when it comes to living a zero waste life. And it was one of the first swaps that I ever started to make when I started living zero waste. As well as for me, my laundry routine, my zero waste laundry routine has been ever changing depending on where I live, what I have access to and so forth. And we'll dive into that as we go on. First up of course is detergent. Zero waste laundry detergent comes in many forms from sheets to paws to tabs to liquid to powder and so many more options. Some are more pollutive than others, though all of them are going to be better than your traditional Tide and Gain stuff that you're going to find at traditional grocery stores. Some are cheaper, some are going to be less messy, some are going to require no measurements, some are smaller and easier to store. It really depends on what your needs are and what your values are and what you're looking for. So first, let's talk about laundry sheets. This has become a hotly debated topic in the zero waste world. Most laundry sheets contain PVA, which is polyvinyl alcohol, which isn't technically a plastic, but it is a polymer and it kind of behaves like a plastic. It is not always guaranteed to break down in water. So depending on where you live, it might turn into these microscopic pieces of plastic that will never actually degrade, or it might actually biodegrade depending on where you live. Certain microbes must be present for PVA to break down fully. And they're usually present in big cities. So it's up to you if you want to take that risk or not. For me, I typically live in more rural areas and I'm not going to be guaranteed that it's going to break down. So I personally don't risk it with laundry sheets anymore if they contain PVA. Now, if you do have your own septic tank, you can add these microbes to ensure that they break down, especially because I know this is a great swap. It really is. It The packaging is cardboard. It's already measured. It's great for people who have kids because it's mess free. Um, it's great for people with disabilities who can't hold big jugs. It's great for college dorms. It's great for me living on the road in an RV. There's so many different reasons why this would be a great swap for you. So it really depends on if you want to risk it with PVA or not. And if you want to learn fully what PVA is, how it breaks down, how it doesn't break down, you can check out this video up here as well as a follow-up video to that. They will both be linked down below. Now, if you do choose to use laundry sheets, my favorite brand was always Kind Laundry. I find they smelled the best, they dissolved the best, and I just overall really liked them. I found some of them like True Earth, whether I used hot water, cold water, room temperature water, whether I put it on top of my load or underneath my load, whether I put it in the tray on a, on, a, on a front load washing machine, I always found residue on my clothing. So you can check out all of my laundry reviews, also linked down below for my thoughts on all of these different brands of laundry sheets that I've tried. So stay tuned for that future video where I'm going to be talking about some more PVA free laundry options if you're looking for that. But next up when it comes to zero waste detergent is liquid. I shouldn't call this one zero waste <laughs> because this one probably is mo the most pollutive just because of how heavy it is. It does take a lot of energy to ship stuff this heavy, which is why stuff like laundry sheets are more eco-friendly because they're, they're lightweight. Laundry liquid, these eco-friendly versions are still going to be better than stuff like Tide and Gain, stuff that is not only heavy, contains a lot of water, so you're paying for water. They come in plastic jugs that are hard to recycle and the ingredients aren't the best. So these are still a step above all of that. Some brands that I have tried in the liquid department are Bestowed Essentials, Clean Cult, and Dirty Labs. They all have their separate pros and cons. Just for example, Clean Cult comes in Petra Pack carton board, which is difficult to recycle. I don't really like Dirty Labs because they use brand new aluminum and then I just had to put that aluminum in my recycling bin. I wish they did like a refill program. So you can check out again, all of the pros and cons to all these brands that I've mentioned in the videos down below. But in short, the pros and cons to liquid detergent as a whole are the pros. It's the same as you used before, no learning curve. The only difference is these eco versions are probably going to be concentrated, so you don't need to use as much. And of course, it's way more earth and human friendly than these traditional liquid detergents that you would get on the shelf at a grocery store. Now the cons though, again, it's heavy to ship. You're paying for water if it's not concentrated. Some of the packaging is not the best and it can also be messy to measure. Okay, let's move on to powder. I think powder is the most eco-friendly option because you're not paying for water. It's going to be lighter than liquid. It can come in paper or metal, doesn't contain PVA. Particularly if you buy an eco-friendly brand, they're going to also use eco-friendly ingredients. So I personally am a big powder fan right now in this time of my life, but I'm sure as you'll get the theme watching my other laundry videos, I've changed my mind over the last six years or so. So I might change my mind again, but for right now, I'm a big fan of powder. So like even if you go to Walmart or Target and get a, a carton of 
a paper box full of laundry powder, that's still more eco-friendly than choosing something like Tide. Like if you only have access to buying what's locally available to you, I think powder in a paper box is the best option. Now, something that I think gets misconstrued about powder is that it can damage your washing machine and it can if you use too much, which is a very common theme with a lot of people is, you know, you think more soap equals more clean. It might make your clothes more clean, but more soap will also equal damage to your laundry machine. That includes liquid as well. If you use too much liquid in your laundry machines, they're called washing machines, that will also damage it. So keep that in mind with all these laundry options. Use what's instructed, don't use any more. I promise your clothes will get clean. And if your clothes don't get clean, perhaps you're putting too many clothes in the washing machine and they can't get shuffled up enough. Anyway, so pros to powder is you're not paying for water, you're paying just for the actual detergent. No water in the formula also equals less heavy. Mess free, I love this about powder too. And like, this is what really pushes me away from liquid is liquid is just so messy and it's also easy to measure but there are some cons to powder one of them already being that it's very easy to overuse which can damage your machines also not all machines are powder compatible so but most he high efficiency machines are powder acceptable and then mainstream powder that you find on the shelf at like walmart etc can still contain harmful ingredients so always check the ingredients if you're looking for something that's eco-friendly okay now we have a few other options for laundry detergent that don't fit into these other categories the first of them being the laundry egg i get this one suggested to me all the time by people in my comments probably some of you guys as well saying oh my gosh you should try the laundry egg you should try the eco egg and i finally gave in i finally got one to review for I think this is part four of my laundry review series. And so far, so good. As someone who lives in an RV full time, this is amazing. It's totally mess free. There's no measuring required. It only takes up this much space because it's just one little egg. It'll last probably like a year without having to replace any of the little pebbles inside. Speaking of the pebbles though, that is the biggest downside to the laundry egg is these little pebbles inside have to be thrown away. But if you're only replacing them once or twice a year, just a handful of little pebbles, that's so much less waste. L any of these other options really. Something to note with all of these eco-friendly detergents is none of them are going to leave a very big strong smell in your clothing because there's no artificial scents in them so keep that in mind while your laundry might actually be clean and not stinky it's not going to smell artificial like it would if you're using something like tide so far loving the laundry egg and i think this is a great option for people who again don't want to measure don't want mess might have less space if you live in a dorm or a small apartment this is a great option for you and lastly for detergent is soap nuts this one is truly zero waste they are dried nuts slash berries that kind of suds up when you add them to water and because that's all it is it's just one ingredient these little soap berries they can be composted after a few washes so you put a few into a little bag, you tie it, put the bag into your washing machine. You can use it like three to six times, depending on the size of your load and that sort of stuff. They clean your clothes. I always found that my clothes smelled fine. Like this was back when we were both in the Air Force in Okinawa, Japan, where we were like humid and sweaty all day, every day because it was an island. And we used that almost exclusively while we were in Japan and never had problems with dirty laundry. The only con to it is it can be easy to buy from an unethical source, sources that are, you know, destroying land to plant these crops, companies that might be using unethical labor to harvest these crops. I'll do some research. I'll try to find an actual ethical and sustainable brand for you. And again, if you wanna hear more thoughts in full about all of these laundry detergents, check out all of my laundry reviews down below. Let's move on to stain remover. So you can do stain remover in an eco-friendly way that is plastic free no harsh chemicals no harsh ingredients and also easy to use there are tons of zero waste stain remover options out there and they're all very very similar like they might only be different by one ingredient i did a full test i think comparing four or five i think it was five different brands in this video and again i had no one brand come out on top they all functioned very similarly they all had similar ingredients the only difference was price so you could just pick the cheapest one from that list and go from there all you do is is you find your stain if I had a stain right here I would wet the stain I would wet the stain stick rub it on there and that's what the instructions say to do that's all the instructions say but I find that also adding like another couple drops of water rubbing it in and sudsing it up with your hand and then throwing it in the washer did a much better job than not rubbing it in extra with your hand I have one that I still use to this day that I got in 2019 and I used it a lot for that experiment. So like I really, really whittled it down in that experiment. So I'm telling you they last years. You'll pay five to $10 max, max $10. I've never even seen one that expensive. And it'll last you 
what is that, five years? Highly recommend these, they work. Okay, now that you have your stain remover and your laundry detergent picked out, let's move on to actually washing the clothes. First, pick the eco setting on your washing machine. Some washing machines will have a specified eco setting like green mode, eco mode, energy saving mode, something like that. So check your washing machine and see what language they use. Now, what does this setting do? It depends on the machine. Most of them though are designed to conserve energy and water. It just depends. You can look up your specific model and just Google like, what does my washing machine eco setting do? But the point is it will do something to reduce a little bit of waste. And it might seem silly to, you know, put your, your washing machine on your eco setting for one load of laundry, but think about it over the long run. Think about if you do two loads of laundry per week, that's 104 loads of laundry just your household does every year. And if every household switched to an eco setting, we could collectively save a lot of gallons of water, and a lot of energy as well. And that's just with laundry, right? Like that's not even other sorts of forms of energy and water conservation. Which speaking of, I have energy and water conservation videos you can check out after this, linked above and below. But if you don't have an eco setting, your machine probably does have a tap cold setting. What is tap cold? It just means that the water will come out tap temperature. So I know a lot of people will suggest, and I'm sure I have suggested it in the past, is wash on cold because it uses less energy. But in the summer, washing on cold uses more energy because in the summer your groundwater is hot, so if you wash it on cold, it has to use energy to cool it down. And then in the winter, if you wash it on hot, it has to use energy to take that cold groundwater and heat it up. So tap cold will essentially just wash your clothes on cold in the winter, wash your clothes on warm in the summer, and anything in between. Essentially, it won't use any energy to either heat or cool your water. But something else to mention though is washing your clothes on cold will preserve your clothes longer. So it kind of depends. Like, do you want to save a little bit of energy? Do you want to save your clothing? Because if you save your clothing, that will in turn save energy and resources by making your clothes last longer and preventing you from buying new stuff quicker. There are definitely some pros and cons here, things that you have to weigh and pick personally. Of course, always wash on a full load as well. Some machines might have small load settings. So like if you have to wash a small load really like you need laundry really quickly or something like that choose the small load setting it will use less water and energy but always as a rule of thumb wash a full load as i mentioned earlier though not too full too full that your clothes won't get washed properly you don't want to jam pack it full but instead of washing two towels see if you have some other dirty laundry that you can put in with it if you don't have a laundry machine don't worry about buying a new one just go try to find a laundromat instead I love laundromats because it really just encourages us to use what's already been created and share resources. Instead of, you know, the 50 people that use that laundromat each buying a washing machine and a drying machine, that takes so many resources. It'll save all those people money. Well, maybe laundromats are kind of expensive. Laundromats might not actually save you money over the long run. Laundromats can get expensive. It, it really depends. After living on the road for the last eight months or so last year, we did find some laundromats were like 50 cents a dollar. Some laundromats were upwards of $10 per load so it might save you money it might not depending on what sort of prices your laundromat is charging but other perks is this will reduce your energy and water bill you don't have to worry about finding like a, a washing machine repair tech if it breaks it saves room in your house as well it can reduce noise in your house like there's plenty of benefits to using a laundromat Unfortunately though, another downside to laundromats is a lot of them will not allow you to pick the temperature that it washes and dries your clothes on. And I found this to be a huge, huge downside, especially last summer where we went from exclusively washing on cold and line drying our clothes in Las Vegas to then moving into the RV and having to wash probably on hot and dry on hot because that's all we had access to was a laundromat washer and dryer. And our clothes faded so fast this summer. I noticed it within a couple months. That is something to keep in mind is while, you know, you might be saving money and saving and reducing resources and that sort of stuff, your clothes might have to take the brunt of it because you can't control the temperature in most laundromats. Now, if you're in your own home and you're looking to buy a washing machine or a dryer, let's talk about how to find an eco-friendly one. Maybe this is a hot take, but I think that buying any secondhand appliance is better than buying a new eco-friendly piece of tech. Why? It takes huge amounts of resource to create any piece of tech, but something the size of a washing machine or a drying machine, easy amounts of resources. I'm not even talking just the tech, but like the plastic and metal to build these big structures and to ship them and to the energy to create them takes crazy amounts of energy and resources to make them. So even if it's not the most eco-friendly, if you buy an older model secondhand, you're saving so many resources from being created by not shopping brand new. And as we already said, there are ways to make even older models a little bit more eco-friendly, such as washing on tap cold, washing with the temperature of, as the outside world, your tap temperature, and so forth. And of course, this will save you a ton of money. But let's say you do want something brand new, you're in the market, you wanna splurge something that will hopefully last you a long time. 
what should you pick? Of course, look at their eco settings. Does it have energy conservation? Does it have water conservation modes? Does it have tap cold settings? Is it high efficiency? Basically just see how many eco-friendly boxes it can check and pick that one. I'm definitely no expert when it comes to choosing a washing machine and drying machine. I've never bought one brand new and I've only ever had to buy one set ever in my life. When in doubt, I'm sure you could walk into the laundry store. Where do they even sell them? I don't even know where you would buy a brand new one, honestly. Um, but wherever you go to buy a brand new washing machine and drying machine, you can just ask like, hey, what's your most eco-friendly option here? Now, speaking of drying, let's move on to some ways to dry your clothes in a more eco-friendly way. Of course, the first one is to line dry. I love line drying. I found it so fun. You know, be outside for a few minutes, enjoy the evening sun. And listen, I know I was in Las Vegas. I was in the best place in the world to line dry your clothing. So that's probably why I enjoyed it a little bit more than the rest. Uh, I could do it all year long. Yeah, it saved money by not having to run the dryer one to three times per week. It saves energy by harnessing free solar and wind energy. And as I mentioned, it does preserve your clothes, especially, especially if you line dry at night where there's no risk of sun bleaching, which we did in Las Vegas. Or, you know, you just keep them out until they're dry and then you take them in immediately. Don't leave them out in the sun all day long. But like I did notice once we went back to using a, a dryer at the, at the RV parks, our clothes did start to, to bleach. So it does preserve your clothes too. And this could look different for everyone, but for us in Las Vegas, we did an actual like line. Dan built it and it was just in the backyard and we even thrifted all of the clothespins. Or you could do something like a drying rack indoors. This is something that we did when we lived in Okinawa. We didn't do it a ton because it's so humid there. Like even indoors, it was hard to dry clothes on the line. It was mostly for period underwear and delicates and stuff like that. But there are tons of different options out there. The one we had in Okinawa was like one big stick with like arms coming out and it was a circle and it spun. You could also get wall mounted ones that like compress. It's like an accordion style. You could get one like we have here at my mom's. It is, it's literally just like a pop-up rack. There are so many different styles depending on what works for you. But maybe you don't have space for either of these options. What you can just do is dry on a lower heat. This also kind of depends. Drying on a higher heat will take less time, but drying on a lower heat will preserve your clothes longer. <laughs> so it really just depends on you know, which battles you wanna pick. And of course you don't wanna dry it on completely cold. That will take ages. Basically you wanna dry it on warm instead of hot, as well as to speed up the time, you can use another eco-friendly product and that is dryer balls. Dryer balls are designed to actually help jumble and mix your clothes up so that they get drier faster. And this is especially great if you do choose to dry on a lower heat to preserve your clothing and use a little bit less energy. This will use even less energy by speeding up the drying process. As well as they take the place of wasteful dryer sheets to help reduce static. There you have it. There are some swaps to make your laundry routine more eco-friendly. And once again, there is no one size fits all. Take what works for you, leave what doesn't, do a little bit of mix and matching, change it up if it doesn't work for you. Because again, here's what my laundry routines have looked like over the years. In Okinawa, we washed on tap cold. I used mostly laundry sheets while we lived there and soap nuts. And I dried most of my clothes by machine and sometimes hung them out to dry. In Las Vegas, we washed on tap cold, exclusively line dried. And in Las Vegas, I definitely preferred laundry liquid. Maybe I didn't prefer it, but I was just trying to use it all, all the stuff that they shipped us. And then we moved into the RV in Washington and there we used exclusively laundromats. So therefore we had no control over the time, the temperature, anything like that. And the laundry detergent of choice in Washington was to just use up what I already had. I had some laundry sheets. I had some dirty labs left, some clean cult as well. So we were just using a bunch of stuff in Washington just to use it up, prepared for my next round of laundry detergent testing. And now that we're in Ohio, we wash on tap cold. And then I'm testing a bunch of new laundry detergent options, as I said. So stay tuned for my fourth laundry review. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope that you found this valuable and helpful. If you think that anybody else would benefit from this video, don't forget to like it and share it with them. Let us know how you do eco-friendly laundry down below because again, everyone does it different. I've even done it different over the years. I'll see you in the next video though. But until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. Things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live lovely. I really don't want to film today. Oh gosh. But it is a polymorphic. I don't like what's happening. It's not like tinnitus ringing. It's like, maybe this is a new migraine aura. New new aura unlocked. There you have it. There are some swaps to make your, there you have it. There are some swaps to make your laundry routine more eco-friendly. Good God. There you have it. There are some swaps to make your laundry routine more eco-friendly. I still stuttered.